You can be born of the Spirit and not know you are licensed to live above the natural. They know not, neither will they understand. You see, all the foundation of the earth have gone out of course. I have said, ye are gods. As a god which you are, you are ordained to live supernaturally, naturally. You are not just a human being. You are a spirit. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. So you must understand your supernatural status. Just like it is possible to have the key of your house in your pocket and be looking for the key. Where's my key? Where's my key? The house in everybody and the key is inside his pocket. Has it happened to you? <laughs> it's not that you are confused. It's not that you forgot that the key is inside your pocket. Our access code to the realm of the supernatural is the love of God. It is impossible for you to live a life of wonders without that access code. All the children God has given to me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Say the Lord of hosts that dwelleth in Mount Zion. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. So a life of wonder is impossible without the access code. You can be living in wonder, but your wonder is limited. Because your love ratio is also limited. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, scripture said, that the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost planted is the seed. We nurture the seed. Some people, instead of nurturing the seed, they have killed the seed. The cheapest way to kill that seed is to walk in bitterness. Hatred. So people are in church, they are frowning their face. The more you squeeze your face, the more you squeeze it. You squeeze it. Even naturally, as you are bending your veins, you are growing older. Do you know that bitterness makes people age fast? Because your blood becomes poison and you begin to shrink. When you look at the person... It looks like 55. But in the real, this thing is 21. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You can be standing with the person, they will ask, Is that your mother? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I said it in the first service. It's an error. Say with me, error. error. To be in church. Your heart is like one... You are carrying that rock that they kept in there. Where is that place? It's not Zuma rock. Zuma is too big. The person will just die. Your chest carry heavy rock. Everybody, you don't lock everybody. Bitterness, anger, hatred. You 
You can't grow in love. Oh. If you are not growing in love, watch out. It will be impossible for you to live a wonderful life. A life of wonder is a life of divine surprises. How you treat that seed of love determines the dimension of wonders that you will manifest in this life. How you treat it. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. And this sign shall follow them. Mark 16, 20, let's read it. Okay, 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. But instead of them speaking with new tongues, it's gossip tongue. Their own new tongue is, you don't hear. You don't hear. You don't hear. Today they have another, you don't hear. They are in church, you don't hear. You don't hear. They will speak with new tongue. That's why, <laughs> still you put that scripture. They shall cast out devil, they shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Verse 19. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Right hand of God. The next verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following them and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with them the dimension of your love is what determines the dimension of signs and wonders these signs shall follow them that believe these signs shall follow them The love of God has been shed abroad in our heart. Please allow the seed to grow. Allow it to grow. Because allowing it to grow is positioning you and giving an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to manifest through you. To manifest through you. Just as it is in the natural, that is it, how it is. Something just came now. Let me say it. I know that there are some people that are not lovable. There is nothing you can do to love them. But do you know what? You are not loving them because of them. You are loving them because of where you are going. I'm not saying you should go, they should come and you should uh, force them to be your friend though. Love them and go your way. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't allow anybody to hinder you. Yes. Don't allow anybody to hinder you. You can't hinder me. I won't even give you the chance. Don't allow anybody to hinder you by forming one block for the person. Don't give the person any block. Block of bitterness. Block of anger. Block of hatred. Allow the person to go. This person is the reason why I'm not walking in love. You are your reason. You are your limitation. 
When did the person gain access into your heart to hinder you? When? When? When did the person gain access into your heart? You are the landlord of your life. Any tenant you don't want cannot park inside. Did you hear that? Can a tenant force his way into your house? You can't force your way. You can't force your way. So to say that uh, someone is the reason why you are not working in love is a lie. Capital lie. I know that there are some people you can never change their character. That's why they, they say it. This is me. Oh. Even with their bad nature. This is me. Oh. <laughs> you can't change the person. So must you go and break your head for the person? No! Forgive the person and go your way. Love binds people together. It ties people together. Loving God ties you to God, binds you to love. In real marriage, love is the cord that binds husband and wife together. Should I tell you something? People may not like your wife. That's their business. So. Am I saying the truth? So if they don't like your wife now, will you not because they, in fact, you can slap the person. True or false? And should I shock you? Who don't like your wife don't like you? It is hypocrisy. In fact, it is witchcraft to say, who is married here? Yeah. You are married. Come up. It is witchcraft against you for someone to tell you, I like you, but I don't like your wife. See what you will do. Eh? Don't say I bind you. The demon will leave the person. Are you hearing what I'm telling you now? Jesus said, I am my father. I am my father. We are what? If you don't like my wife, run for your life. Because the next thing you will hear is, die by fire. <laughs> run for your life, oh. It's as simple as that. Love ties you together. You can't separate Jesus from God. So by implication, whatever God is, becomes yours. That's why he said, I am my father, we are what? Is it one and a half? Did he say half? I and my father, we are what? Loving God binds you to God. You are bonded spiritually, naturally. And when you are tied to God, you behave like God. You break through like God. You become unhindered like God. You become unlimited like God. How does God behave? One principal nature of God is passion for souls. Let me take for example... Husband and wife, they are supposed to run with one vision. Am I saying the truth? It's not that a wife will say, my own is cosmetics. 
your own is transport. Will it work? Answer me, will it work? Let me give you another example. Let me use a pastor. Your own is preaching. My own is restaurant. Will it work? It can never work. Whatever God is after, because you are tied to God, your heart pants after the same thing. Your heart pursue after the same thing. God's heartbeat becomes your passion. God's heartbeat is that souls be saved. Men are rescued. Like I said in the first service, the reason why we are talking of souls be saved, men be rescued, is not, is not that so that we will go from third service to fourth service. It's to abort the agenda of hell against the man, against the woman. There are people the devil has programmed to be wasted. There are people the enemy has programmed that their destiny be punctured. There are people that the enemy has preplanned that they will not live their full life. So through prayer, Lord, intervene in this man's life. Rescue this man's soul. Deliver him from destruction. And on the reach out, say, Lord, Jesus loves you. The person will be smiling. You know, there are some people you tell them Jesus loves you. They are looking at you. Am I telling you the truth? They are just looking at you. What is this person trying to tell me now? He, he, he won't win me. He won't win me. He won't win me. No, you are not winning him. You are rescuing him. You are delivering him. You are rescuing the person. You are delivering the person. You can't prove to love God and lack passion for souls. The proof that you love God You can't watch a dying sinner die. You can't watch someone Satan has listed to be wasted. Be wasted. You press in prayer. What makes soul winning easy and sweet is prayer. Because anyone that is held bound, there is someone that held him bound. In the platform of prayer, the force is holding the person bound. They are broken. Our intervention for the person's life is initiated. When you are in love with God, and the love of God is growing in you, one thing that will be noticeable in your life is that you are growing in power. <laughs> growing in ability. You are growing in the might of the spirit. The might of the spirit is growing in you because you are growing in the love of God. Christ, the power and the wisdom of God. How can you say you are growing in love of God and you are not growing in power? Something is wrong. It is not love of God. It's lust. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's, the person is growing in lust. You know, you can be in church and be lusting. It's true now. Brother is lost in. 
sister is lost in. It can be a pastor and be lost in. It can be a deacon, deaconess and be lost in. I won't forget one wrong news. I say, why didn't you tell me? Why are you telling me now that I've left? So that I will do what? I will now begin to broadcast. A sister and usher. The pastor took her to Abuja and went and slept with her. One, two, three. And he was booking flights for you. You were enjoying it. And when he's no longer giving you face, Pastor, I want to tell you something. I said, what is the thing? I want to tell you what happened, what this pastor did to me. And funny enough, when the pastor climbed poop it, strange fire. The first question I asked her, did he tie you rope? From Benia to Abuja, you know, go by road, you went by L, a tie you rope put inside plane. You enter. When you land, taxi carry you, bah. you come back. You go the first one, go the second one, go the third one. It cannot take place without your consent. Now you are coming to report. I say, go and repent. You are a marine spirit. I didn't spear the pastor either. You know I won't spear you now. I will lie, lie. I say, come. This is what you did. Don't climb that altar until you go and uh, go and cry before God. You allow a sister to damage your priesthood, your oil is soured. You know the anointing attracts. That's why I said you can't survive as a pastor if you don't have a vow. Yes, you can't. You need a vow against that side. If not, guess go yeah yeah you. I'm I'm telling you. They will yeah, they will yeah, yeah rise you. Instead of love for God is now lost. There are people doing it too. They're just like ha 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 ha. Some people are doing it. Hear me? Iniquity, immorality does not only corrupt destiny, it makes destiny to fade away. Fade away. You become a shadow of yourself. Don't allow anybody to tell you everybody is doing it. It's a lie. Everybody is not doing it. I can beat my chest and tell you everybody is not doing it. We were telling one pastor the other day, I heard that they say one dickiness is cooking for you. I said, be careful because the next thing you go see her pants. And I called the wife. I said, if I hear it again, the dickiness is cooking for your husband. If you are traveling, cook and fool the fridge. Let him go and eat it from there. Not that he will cook. I, I heard that mommy is not around. And so what? 
Are you assistant wife? There is no assistant wife. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What we are saying is happening in real life. Real life. Thank God, God has blessed the Son of Man to cook. So even if my wife travels two weeks, I can cook a goosey. I can cook a bono. I can cook a lubu. I can cook a kazi. I can cook vegetable. What do you want to cook for me? No sister can win me in the kitchen. I know what I'm talking about. I learned that one well, well from my mother. Well, I have six sisters. None of them can beat me in the kitchen. Before all of them got married, if they are around, I'm, I'm still in charge. Yes. <laughs> and you know, these are some of the things that make people fall. These are some of the things that make people fall. I don't know why the Holy Ghost is moving in this direction. Now. May the Lord deliver any man or any woman that is a victim of such. If you are saying amen, say better amen now. When you love God, you enjoy defense with God. Because when you are a lover of God, God will always defend, protect, shield the one he loves. Pastor Solo, can you expose your wife to danger? In fact, you will even put your head even if there is danger. No wonder scripture says, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So you defend. You can't be insulting my wife and not expect my arrows. You should expect it. I will shoot it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I will shoot it. And if you are a person, it will touch you. Because an attempt on her is an insult on me. That's why God said, you are the apple of my eyes. He that touches you, God will touch. So you can see what the love, your love for God is bringing for you. But where God wants to prove that you love him is to reach out. All these are the benefits. This is your responsibility. Reach out for souls. Don't allow anybody to be wasted by the devil. Be on the reach out. Rescue the person. Pray for the person to be delivered. Intervene for the person's soul. David said, I will not give myself rest until I found a habitation for my God. I will not give myself rest until I found a habitation for my God. Until I found a habitation for my God. So growing in love is a task. Say with me, a task. Because what every one of us carry at redemption is a seed. But we nurture our seed. We nurture our seed. You nurture your seed of love. 
Hear me? It is foolishness. It's an abuse on your redemption. Because someone hates someone is not influencing you to hate the person. You are a mumu. You are a classified or dead. Somebody didn't do anything. You have not met the person in Adam. Someone is not telling you, hate him for me. You are, you are now like Balak. Go and read it in Numbers 23. Balak came and hired Balaam to curse him, Israel, and Jacob. He said, I cannot curse him that the Lord has not cursed. He said, I have not found iniquity in Jacob. Never had I found perverseness in Israel. So your chance for supernatural manifestation is limited by love. If you are not walking in love, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's your fault. You can't reduce me to hate you. No! I wouldn't do that. It's a, it depletes the anointing. It depletes the anointing. It reduces the anointing. It reduces your chance of supernatural manifestation. Some things you are looking for now cannot come by natural means. They can only come by supernatural intervention. But look at this. Every time you make up your mind to grow in love, you break through like God. Wherever God breaks through, you break through. Whatever cannot say no to God cannot say no to you. Any door that cannot be shut against God cannot be shut against you. Where others go and fail, when you go there, you succeed. Why? You carry what nullifies failure. I love Bishop David Oedipo. All the people that are opening their smelling mouth to abuse him, insult him, calling him names, they cannot break through like him. They cannot succeed like him. They are not going for, rather, they are going backward. They are going backward. Their life is just taking a step backward, backward, backward. And yet, it's blessing the tray. Blessing the tray. Succeeding. Making mouth is cheap. Enter war front, make we know who's strong. Am I saying the truth? Talk is cheap. Face the challenge, let's know. I can count number of persons that have been opening their mouth to be speaking against Oyedepo. They are nowhere. They are still struggling. Every day he's increasing his love for God. Please, I beg you. If you don't grow in love, you will groan in life. You will groan. To groan means, man, challenges will be squeezing you. And one of the major encounters every one of us need in destiny is an encounter with the love of God. When we encounter the love of God, our nature, our natural nature begin to give way for our supernatural nature. No wonder Paul said that he may increase that I be decreased. Self dies. The natural nature is a limitation to destiny. The natural nature. That is why increasing our love nature increases our chance for fulfillment in destiny. Our chance for success. Our chance for breakthrough. 
For with man it is impossible, but for with God all things are possible. Your actual destiny is in your God nature. Your actual destiny is not in your flesh. It's in your God nature. And to increase the chance of your destiny manifesting is increasing your love nature. Your love nature. When your destiny encounters increasing dimensions of love, one thing that will happen to you, you begin to grow in revelation. You begin to grow in secrets. Scripture said the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things revealed, they are for our children's children. Any man that is not growing in vision, go and check it. There is a limit on the spirit. Hey, they church, they children. Go, 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 go. Throw it away! Swallow it. <laughs> and you know, vision is what takes people far. Scripture says, where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. Secrets is for lovers. And vision is secrets. Because what God shows you, others are struggling to know it. For your destiny to encounter secrets, you must be growing in love. David said, my heart and my affection is set towards the house of my God. You can't be growing in love for God and not be growing in vision for life. So your destiny encounters visions. Any destiny you see flourishing now has encountered what you have not encountered. Has seen what you have not seen. Has had what you have not had. So whatever you know now is in part. For you to move from where you are to where God has prepared for you next, you need to encounter something new. Vision in life and destiny is progressive. Concerning Joseph, scripture said he dreamt. He yet dreamt another dream. Now God gave him yet another dream again. So when you are growing in love, one thing that will happen to your destiny, you will encounter more revelation. Your vision is getting expounded. And the more your vision is getting expounded, doors of possibilities begin to open for you. The things you are calling impossible, they are the things you have not yet known. If you know that, ah, this thing cheap, man. This thing cheap. If I don't like this, don't like this, don't like this. See you, I go there. So for your destiny to encounter value, increase your love for God. Increase your love for God. Let's take classical Bible example. Peter, James, and John. Their love and passion for Christ was higher. They were the three that followed him to the mountain of transfiguration. Am I saying the truth? After the encounter, they say, ah, master, it's good for us to be here. Uh, this place, we don't need to go back, sir. <laughs> master, it's good for us to be here. There's Jesus said, no, it's not for you to decide who stays here. It's God that decides that. Should I tell you something? When someone is following you with his heart, are you, are you following me? When someone is following you with his heart, will you know or not? Will you know or not? When someone is following you cunningly and craftily, 
you will be dealing with him cunningly and also what? Craftily. If he's following you with his heart, you tell him, you see, when you get to some so place, this is how you do things, this is how you do things, this is how you do things. Let me shock you. My master told me something this much he has never told me before. I'm not going to tell you. You see what he? <laughs> he told me what he has never told me before. He said, I'm telling you now because I'm seeing it, you are changing levels. So when you get to this level, this is the behavior this is the character that sustains people at that level. In my mind, I was asking, why didn't he tell me since? He now said, I know you are surprised. He said, I'm waiting to understand you as you are growing so that I'll be dropping them small, small. That is how God relates with us. No wonder scripture said the ways of God, they are past finding out. As you are following him, he will be showing you. He will be revealing to you. Now, have we ever had 52 days of encounter since we joined this ministry? Have you had? I never have. But all of a sudden, God now told Papa, 52 days, this is what will happen. Why didn't he tell him since? It is meant for now. Why? This is the season for it. Please, I want to let you know. The deeper your love for God, the more he unfolds your destiny. Your destiny cannot be greater than the revelation you assess. Your destiny cannot be bigger than the secrets that is revealed to you. So the more secrets are revealed to you, the chances for fulfillment in life and destiny answers to you. So where your love stops, that's where your vision ends. Your vision in life and destiny cannot be bigger than your love for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number two. Every time your passion for God is on the rise, your destiny encounters fresh fire. Say with me, fresh fire. The intensity of your fire will determine the speed of your destiny. The intensity of your fire will determine the speed of your destiny. And if there is any passion that is the devil is desperately seeking to quench in your life, is your prayer passion. O oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee. To see thy power as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. No wonder the enemy is fighting your prayer life bumper to bumper. He's fighting it. Seeking every available measure to see how you can be reduced in prayer. Because if you can succeed in reducing your prayer, you will quench you. Prayer enhances spirituality and kills carnality. So Satan will be making sure this prayer thing is getting too much. Don't mind, Pastor. God has called him to pray. Are you Pastor? That's what the devil will be asking you. But Jesus said, Men ought always to pray. Did he say, Pastors always to pray? Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Your prayer life is the unlocking chamber of your great destiny. 
you shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. So your greatness is tied to your prayer life. No wonder the enemy is fighting your prayer life. Tell you, sleep small. It's three o'clock. You will wake by four and pray. From three o'clock, it's six o'clock. You say, sleep small. Sleep small. By seven, you wake. You can just pray for 15 minutes and go. You sleep small, you find yourself by eight o'clock. It's happening. I say, it's happening. If it's in your heart to pray, sleep will run. Sleep will run. And lastly, if you want your destiny to continually count, be hungry for knowledge. Say with me, be hungry for knowledge. You are too complacent for the great destiny that God has given to you. You are too relaxed. You are too relaxed. You don't look like someone that wants to attain to a great destiny because your hunger for knowledge is not showing it. Now they have brought new books to read it is, is a problem. How much more to buy it? Anything you can't spend your money for is not an interest to you. But should I tell you something? Do you know that you need money to fulfill destiny? But Satan has implanted in you the wasteful spirit. Some of you now can be claiming, I'm a student, I'm a student, I'm a student. But a recharge card has never been scarce in your phone. I'm a student, I'm a student. You are buying bondu every week. You want to be on Facebook 247. But you cannot buy a book of 1,000 naira. You want to be on Facebook 247. Only to post picture. Sunday things. <laughs> but you can't buy a book of 1,000 naira. Service was wonderful today. Praise God. You can't buy a book. Am I saying the truth? May the Lord have mercy on you. They say where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. I carried one of my boys to a Biomis church. Before his very koro koro, I bought books 258,000. He shouted. He said, sir, it's too much. I said, I want my life to be too much. He couldn't believe it. I wrote check. They could accept my check because they know me. I wrote check. They sent someone to go and cash it before I came out. He said, sir, I said, they buy book. I said, I want grow. She be see how you don't grow rich. I want grow the poshua. Do you want to grow? Yes. Nothing grows knowledge, destiny like knowledge. Knowledge. The next one I'm going now. Only God know. Maybe I will spend up to five hundred thousand on books alone. On books and tapes. Lastly, no destiny flourish without a prophet. Encounter with destiny is also tied to prophetic encounter. He saw also among the prophets. But when he came into the midst of the prophet, he began to prophesy. And scripture says, and he went up unto his high place. The prophets you meet, they determine the things that opens up for you. Every 
great destiny has been unlocked by a prophet. Time will fail us to go into statistics to show now. Bishop David Oedepo encountered, encountered late Archbishop Benson Idahosa. Am I correct? He also encountered Pa Enoch Adeboye. Am I correct? He also encountered Kenneth Hagin. Am I correct? He also encountered Kenneth Copeland. Am I correct? The oil you encounter they determine the things that unlocks in your life and destiny. No wonder. To be prophetless is to be limited in destiny. Not all these cherry prophet. What did you drop? You feel form five thousand. You buy anointing oil, 20,000. All those are hungry prophets. They are trained by butter prophets. In fact, they help to demonize you the more than to transform you. I know some of you are victims. You've been to places where they say you need to pay something, and the man of God who is in doing prayer. They don't, they don't, prayer does not go with money. Any, any place you go that says you need to pay something that they use in doing the prayer work, you are a mumu. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They are feeding on your ignorance because that's how they have been doing it. But when you encounter a prophetic grace, your destiny must jack up. I say your destiny must jack up. My prayer for you you will no longer be on the same spot. That amen is too weak. I say you will no longer be on the same spot. Rise up to your feet. Apostle Paul said, return to your first love. Tell your neighbor, return to your first love. Return to your first love. The way you started serving God when you got born again, with zeal, with passion, what happened to you? No wonder Paul said, who has bewitched you, O Galatians? He said, did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? Return, return back to your first love. The way you used to pray before, you have lost it. Now you are now a modern city believer, city Christian, socialized Christian. The Bible does not have socialized Christian. It's ancient Bible. You are going to pray, Lord, restore my love. Lord, restore my passion for the kingdom. Whatever will make me lose my love for you, Lord, deliver me. Whatever will quench my passion for knowledge, for your presence, Lord, restore me. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I didn't say you should pray gentle prayer. If the thing is really mean, if you really mean it, you will pray it out. Restore my love. Restore my passion. Refuel my heart with your love. Refire my heart with passion for the kingdom, passion for souls. Refuel my heart. Lift up your voice and pray. Whatever is making me lose pace with destiny, whatever is quenching my love for God, reducing my passion for the kingdom, Lord. Heal my heart today. Le kuparane alaba shagadayata.
Holy Ghost by your fire. Burn every chaff. Whatever I want to kill my passion for God, Lord, heal my heart today. Deliver my soul. Deliver my soul. Whatever I want to steal my passion, Lord, recover my passion. Lord, by your fire, recover my passion. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray from the depths of your heart. Heal my passion. Renew my passion. Refire my passion. Lekerodo shikataya. Let sote break le do setia. Whatever I want to kill my passion, Lord, heal my passion. Revive my passion for this kingdom, for your house. Revive my passion. Refuel my passion. Rekindle my passion. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus, and you want to rededicate your heart back to God. You were once on fire for God, but suddenly, wrong friends have made you lose touch. With your first love. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray.